another Red Chair Chat. Today we have Austin Bacaric with us. Austin, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Good. So tell me a little bit about yourself and how you made the journey into real estate. So I, uh, I was a photographer before I got okay. into real estate and um, I got really burnt out of that business, but I was used to having freedom mm -hmm. uh, of being self-employed. And I always had an interest in real estate when I was in high school, but you know, I had this business going and you don't fix what's not broken. Yep. So I continued doing photography and, and just completely burnt myself out. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at real estate and I just decided to one day take the leap and do it. Okay. And uh, I have no regrets in doing that. Yeah. How long have you been licensed? So I've been licensed, I got licensed at the very beginning of 2019, so about four and a half years. Right before it got really fun. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so in, in the making the transition from photography into real estate, how did those businesses translate together? Like the same skills or people? Mm -hmm. uh, they're definitely different okay. in a lot of ways, okay. but there's a lot of similarities in, in the two businesses as well. Mm -hmm. I think that you know the biggest similarity in, in how that transition worked is understanding relationships mm -hmm. and knowing that in order to build a customer-based business, you have to have relationships with people. Yeah and knowing that you have to be a networker and able to connect with all different kinds of people. Uh, I would say it's the biggest you know, way that it was easy to transition. Yeah. But there's also a whole other level of things that were very different um, in aspects as well. Yeah. Uh, totally different clients, uh, totally different legal structure, <laughs> yeah. um, going through inspections and all of the different things that come up in a transaction. That doesn't exist in photography. Yep. Yep. So whenever you got licensed, why did you choose to put your business with Keller Williams? So when I very first got licensed, I was originally joining a team mm -hmm. that was here at Keller. Even before joining that team, though, I already had my eyes set on Keller Williams for multiple reasons. I think the number one reason was at the time, profit share was the, the first thing that really mm -hmm. caught my eye, knowing that you can earn money passively as well in addition to you know your income is yeah. selling homes uh, I think the other reason was knowing that the training that is provided is far exceeding what some other brokerages are putting out there uh, and it's not just surface level coaching either uh, there's opportunity for a higher level and deeper level of coaching that other brokerages I don't feel have in place yeah. at the level that Keller Williams does because every agent and every business owner, regardless of the business, uh, if they want to grow, they're going to hit glass ceilings. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, not everybody knows how to break through those glass ceilings as you come across those in business. Mm -hmm. So being at a brokerage that understands <clears throat> how to get you through those ceilings each step of the way through your business is crucial. I love that analogy. I, I think that's a great visual for everybody to see if you're always at a different point in your business. Mm -hmm. And so once you hit that point, how do you overcome it? Yeah. And so being able to have the tools, people, and resources to go back and say, oh, I was at this spot and this is what I did mm -hmm. to overcome it. This is what you could look at doing. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And I know you were really big into profit share. I remember we were talking about, okay, how do we build it very wide and mm -hmm. build deep? And I think it comes from those relationships. It's, Absolutely. You're having conversations with people, but you're also able to tell them, here's my experience and how it's changed my life and this is how you can if you by coming here this is what it could do for you absolutely yeah absolutely because you're not only I mean anybody I feel like who gets into real estate is looking to build some sort of, of security in their financial yeah. life and I think knowing that not only you have opportunity to earn through selling homes but additionally through profit share is a big deal mm -hmm. Because you're not only helping the person that you bring on under you, but you're helping yourself 
and those around you through yeah. that process. You're building wealth. Absolutely. That it's not just a quick paycheck here or there. It's something mm -hmm. that's sustainable over time. Yeah. That's awesome. So tell me about your business right now. What does the structure look like um, and what is your production? Absolutely. So when I my very first year as a solo agent, I did 3.6 million. I think it was my very first year. Uh, and then this past year, I closed out just under 10 million. Wow. And then this year so far, I'm sitting at 4 million, I believe. That's amazing. So it's definitely changed from the beginning and it's continuing to grow, mm -hmm. um, but it's a slow and steady growth. I didn't want to experience a crazy fast growth, kind of like I did in my past business, because mm. that burnt me out. Yep. I knew that when I got into real estate, I wanted to make this long term. Mm -hmm. I knew that I wanted this to be a, a career that I was in mm -hmm. for a while. Yeah. And so I really wanted to focus on growing it slow and steady and making sure the right pieces are in place mm -hmm. so that I'm not going 100 miles down the highway with the yeah. wheel shaking. Yeah. And because you've experienced that burnout before, mm -hmm. I think it's given you a great awareness of how you can check in to see how do I not do that? Yeah. I know what I did in the past and I don't want to come across that again. And Absolutely. so having that awareness is so crucial. Mm -hmm. What do you think has been the biggest attribute to your growth over the last few years? I think one, one, a big part of that I think is learning more about myself oh. as, as a person has helped me grow on the business side and learning my skill set as an agent. What aspects of an agent am I good at doing? Um, because not every agent's good at everything. Yeah. Um, if it were for me to sell a commercial property, I wouldn't know the first step in that process. Mm -hmm. And I think learning what I enjoy doing as a realtor and enjoy doing as an agent and what clients I enjoy working mm -hmm. with has really helped me focus on what direction I want to grow yeah. rather than throwing a bunch of darts out there <laughs> yeah. and seeing which one sticks. Yeah. Um, really focusing on what I'm good at doing has allowed me to enjoy that more because I don't always want to sit down and make phone calls. Yeah. I don't always want to do two open houses in a weekend. But I know that I have to put myself out there where the opportunity is. Mm -hmm. And so finding open houses that I enjoy doing, mm -hmm. homes that I enjoy looking at, finding ways to make that process fun has allowed me, I think, to grow a lot. And how did you know when you that was fun to you at like those different aspects? Is it trial and error? Of the it, different homes and in the beginning, mm -hmm. it definitely was like sticking yep. a bunch of yeah. darts to a board and seeing which ones. <laughs> uh, as time progressed, I realized I was wasting my time, mm -hmm. and I was like, I don't enjoy showing flip properties. Mm -hmm. I don't enjoy going into the north side of Springfield and hearing you know cars and motorcycles yeah. driving by. I enjoy you know looking at homes that have really nice kitchens because I enjoy cooking. Yeah. So it's like I enjoy looking at properties that have really nice views. And that's kind of what I realized makes it fun for me, mm -hmm. is being able to go into those homes and look at these properties and show those properties to people. Yeah. Um, so it was trial and error mm -hmm. in the beginning. I think that you have to kind of go through the muck yeah, of, course. of your first year. Um, and then you kind of get out of that when you realize, like, okay, I enjoy dealing with land, or I don't enjoy dealing with land, or farms, or You're residences. able to find your passions. In Absolutely. It. That's awesome. Because I know you're really focusing on the luxury side of it. I have been recently. Yeah. Yeah. And why does luxury appeal to you? I think, you know, the, well, one, you know, the luxury market is, it's very different because any home from two hundred to four hundred thousand on average is pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. You have the same finishes, the same exterior. It's all cookie cutter. Yeah. And in showing those homes to people, you lose the excitement, which they notice that. Like 
At, at that point, you're in a house and it's well, it has three bedrooms, a kitchen, a bathroom. Like they're all the same. Yeah. And people want their agent to be excited when they're showing them property. They want their agent to feel like they're invested. And when I get excited and I go into a home, I feel good, you know, doing that. That's awesome. And I know that my clients pick up on that too, mm -hmm. because they can tell when I'm excited about a house. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's what's fun, you know, looking at like luxury homes. Uh, and we have a pretty good sized market here in Springfield for it. We have a lot of homes that are considered luxury here and there's a huge variety. None of them are the same and that's really, really fun to experience. I love that. And you mentioned the kitchens part because you love cooking. Absolutely. So I'm sure the kitchens and luxury homes, you're just ooing and aahing when you walk into it. Yeah, I mean, see it. you see appliance, brand, appliance brands that you typically never hear of. Mm. Um, yeah. You see these commercial grade, you know, appliances that are not in normal homes. These are things that you see in commercial kitchens. And that's fun to experience that uh, and see those in use. So how do you educate yourself on the brands in these luxury homes? So I think, you know, a lot of it is when I don't have a lot, you know, going on, you know, during the day, uh, all my calls are caught up and I don't have any appointments. I'll just go tour homes that are vacant to become familiar with what these homes, you know, have in them. Yeah. And, and that you can do that in any price point too. I think it's important to educate yourself on all price points not just in the luxury brand, because it's important to be able to know the difference between a $200,000 house and a $400,000 house. Yeah. It's important to know the difference in a $500,000 house and a, and a million dollar house. But going through and just touring vacant ones, Googling the brands, paying attention to what type of materials are being used mm. in these homes. Is it composite decking or treated lumber? Is it welded, you know, railing, or is it metal drilled into lumber? Got it. There's a lot of things that determine different values on properties. And then, you know, becoming familiar with uh, different types of materials for roofs, mm -hmm. understanding the windows, uh, different window brands, uh, Anderson versus Pella, Pella versus, you know, uh, some of these the third-party brands. Mm -hmm that are out there, knowing what the benefits are of those. Yeah. Just really becoming almost obsessed with knowing this stuff so that you can present it to your clients mm -hmm. when they ask. Because uh, people want an educated agent on those things. Yeah. And they don't know that there's so many different varieties mm -hmm. and detailing that go into homes, especially right. like you said, the different price points of that. Mm -hmm. What are your main sources of lead generation? You had mentioned open houses. Is there anything yeah. else that has really worked well for your business? So as the business has aged mm -hmm. and continues to grow, I think lead sources come from different places. Yeah. Because in the beginning, you don't have a client base. You don't have uh, people that generally know you as an agent yet yeah. because it takes time to build that awareness mm -hmm. that you're an agent. Um, so in the beginning, I cold called a lot. Wow. Um, I was doing, again, I was sticking a bunch of darts out there and seeing what stuck. I mean, I was doing open houses, cold calling, door knocking, anything and everything that I could just to get in front of people. Yep. Because at that time, like I needed to make money and I needed to make money quick. So like I needed to find business. Mm -hmm. So putting myself out there, I was doing everything. After I picked up clients and I started to figure out what I enjoy doing lead generation wise, I figured out I enjoy doing open houses. Awesome. Open houses are a big part of my business. Um, referrals are now a big part of my business as well. Um, and my past clients, uh, now that you know some of them have been in their homes for three, four years, they're looking to upgrade, make life changes, job changes. And that's a big part of that. Um, and I would say having listings as an agent brings in uh, those leads yeah. as well. 
That's awesome. And you mentioned two open houses a week. Mm -hmm. And obviously, since you've been in the business, multiple eight clients are coming back because you've been able to build that foundation and that relationship on previous experiences that you've helped them buy and sell. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. How do you think KW has expanded your vision or your thinking around life and your business? Well, I think that, you know, having a business prior, I had expectations of what owning like a business is like and how you do things. But Keller Williams, there's the difference is like you're not just learning how to be an agent here. Mm -hmm. There there's multiple layers to an onion and digging like deeper and deeper into the different layers of your business mm -hmm. is crucial. And I think that going through some of like the coaching and the programs and going to family reunion and mega camp and all of the things that you can plug into mm -hmm. here it showed me that there's multiple ways that you can run a business mm -hmm. and there's different models and systems that you can plug into and really grow from that and i think you know it, from looking at it from an aspect of life is <clears throat> we don't have to you know, work for somebody else yeah. our whole life. We have the opportunity to build a life that we want through Keller Williams. And I think it's crucial, you know, being with like a brokerage that isn't just focusing on like, well, move more houses. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, what do you want your life to look like? What do you want that business to, to be? So build the business to support the life that you want. And I think that's really cool that we have that philosophy mm -hmm. here. And I you know, would never have thought that way before had I not been here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing your education and knowledge with us today. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Stay tuned for next week for another Red Chair Chat. Thank you.